Hello, I'm Hilary Weller. In this video we're going to derive some finite difference schemes in order to solve the linear advection equation in one spatial dimension. Advection is a very important process in atmospheric, uh, in atmospheric modelling, in atmospheric motions. Uh, it's an important term in all of the equations governing atmospheric motion and developing accurate advection schemes is uh, an active area of research. You should have a printed copy of the notes with gaps in them so that you can uh, pause the video and, uh, and fill in the notes as we go along. You can also download a lecture version of the notes in order to check your work. Uh, in one spatial dimension, um, X, with constant wind U and no diffusion or sources of sinks of uh, a, a variable phi in the atmosphere, um, the linear advection equation, which is equation 1.1 in these notes, um, can be simplified to, to this equation, d phi by dt plus u d phi by dx equals zero. Or if you want to represent derivatives just with underscripts, that's phi t plus u phi x is equal to zero. This equation has an analytical solution, which is very useful for checking the accuracy of numerical methods. Um, the analytical solution isn't general, um, so it's, it, we still need the numerical methods. So if we know the initial conditions of phi, and we call it phi at x at time t equals zero, then s the solution at time t um, is given by x by phi um, by, the solution, by the initial conditions, but shifted round. So phi of x of t is equal to phi of x minus ut at time zero. You can check that this is an analytical solution. Um, uh, a hint to do that is you define capital X equals x minus ut, and then calculate d phi by d capital X by dx and d capital X by dt, and use the chain rule to calculate d phi by dx um, and d phi by dt. Um, which I'm not going to go through now, but you can check the answers on the lecture version of the notes online. So the first numerical method we're going to look at for solving the advection equation is called forward in time, backward in space. So here again is the advection equation that we're going to approximate with finite differences. So we're going to divide space x into n equal intervals, each of size delta x, so that position xj is equal to j times delta x, where delta, delta x is the size of the intervals in space. And then we've got, we're going to have a, a value of phi at each of those locations. So we've got xj and phi j is at location xj. We're going to divide time into time steps of size delta t so that the time t underscore n is equal to n times delta t for n equals 0, 1, 2 and so on. We're going to define phi at position j time n uh, using this notation. That's phi at position xj time tn. Um, and then we're going to approximate d phi by dt at position xj time tn using a forward difference. So we're to calculate this gradient, we go forward in time. So this d phi by dt at time level n using phi at time level n plus 1 minus phi at time level n divided by delta t. And in space, we're going to calculate the gradient d phi by dx using a backward difference. So d phi by dx at position j is equal to phi at position j minus phi at position j minus 1 divided by delta x. We're going to substitute both of these into equation uh, 2.1, which is this equation. And this will give us the forward in time, backward in space scheme. Uh, here, I've substituted those two into here. Um, this can be rearranged to give uh, phi j at n plus 1 on the left-hand side and everything else on the right-hand side, um, which is useful because this means that we can now, if we know everything at time n, we can then calculate phi at time n plus 1 so we can step forward in time. We can also, to simplify this equation, we can substitute in the current number, c equals u delta t over delta x. Now, um, pause the video so you can write this down before you check your answer against uh, the one that I've calculated. Pause it now. So now we have phi um, at position j time level n plus 1 
is equal to phi at position j at time level n minus the current number times phi at position j time n minus phi at position j minus 1 time n. So some questions about this. Why did we go forwards in time? You can pause and have a think about that. Um, the answer is uh, we want to be able to rearrange in order to calculate an equation for phi at time level n plus 1 based only on values that are known from the previous time step. Next question, why do we go backwards in space? Um, that's something we'll come to in subsequent lectures. Uh, what's the order of accuracy of forward in time, backwards in space, um, in both in space and time, i.e. what is the order n such that the error of approximation the error of the scheme is proportional to delta x to the power n or delta t to the power n. That's something we're going to do in this lecture. Uh, what influence will the errors have on the solution? So in order to calculate the, the order of accuracy of forward time backward in space, um, we're going to use Taylor series to derive a backward in space approximation for forward in time backward in space. We're only going to calculate the order of accuracy of the um, gradient in space because the gradient in time is is the same it's just uh, forward rather than backward so it'll have the same order of accuracy um, so we start by writing down the Taylor series for phi j min minus 1 about phi, phi j so that is um, phi j minus delta x phi j dashed so phi j dashed here is uh, d phi by dx at position j uh, plus delta x squared over 2 factorial phi j double dashed plus terms of order delta x cubed. And we can rearrange this to find the backward in space approximation for phi j dashed phi d phi by dx at position j, which is what we want. So pause the video and have a go at that and then continue when you've done it. So you should have that phi j dashed is equal to phi j minus phi j minus 1 over delta x uh, plus other terms and this is not known so the, this term which is not known this is, these are the, what, this is what we know this is what we don't know so this is the leading error uh, this leading error term, term tells us two things um, it tells us that the error is proportional delta x to the power 1 so the approximation for the spatial derivative this one here is first order accurate this term also tells us that the error behaves like d2 phi by dx squared. So the, the, the error uh, in the spatial, spatial term is, looks like the source term in a diffusion equation. So adding this term, this error, to the advection equation makes it behave like a diffusion equation. Um, so in the assignment you'll be writing to code to solve the linear advection equation using forward and time backward in space. And you can see if it looks like, if it behaves as if it's got a diffusion, uh, a diffusion term in it. And you can also check that the error is proportional to delta x to the power 1. Next we're going to derive the centred in time, centred in space scheme, and also the forward in time, centred in space scheme. So for the centred in time, centred in space, to solve, here's the linear advection equation, we're going to approximate d phi by dt at, at time tn uh, using a centred differencing, so we're using time, t, time n minus 1 and time n plus 1. So pause the video and have a go at that yourself, uh, and then, I'll, then you can check your answer. So d phi by dt at time level n using a centred differencing is phi at time level n plus 1 minus phi at time level n minus 1, and now we're dividing by 2 delta t because um, these two times are two delta t apart. And in space, we're going to approximate d phi by dx at position xj, again using a centred difference. So we get phi at position j minus 1 minus phi, phi, phi at j plus 1 minus phi at j minus 1, and again divided by 2 delta x because you're doing that minus that divided by the distance between them. Then we're going to uh, substitute these approximations into this equation and rearrange to get phi j minus, minus phi at time n plus 1 on the left-hand side 
and everything else on the right hand side and again we'll substitute in the current number c equals u delta t over delta x so pause the video and have a go at that and then check your answer so we get phi at uh, position j time level n plus one is equal to uh, phi at position j time level n minus c uh, and now the spatial gradient is at time level n minus one phi j plus one minus phi j minus one this is a three time level formula. In order to calculate the phi at time level n plus one, you need two previous time levels. You need n and n minus one. So this is gonna make it hard to get started because when you first start the simulation, you've only got your initial conditions. You haven't got initial conditions at two time levels. So for the first time step, in order to get started, you need to use another scheme, for example, forward in time centered in space to calculate phi at time level one and based on what we've done so far you should be able to write down an equation for forward in time centered in space so pause the video to attempt that and then you can check your answers so here forward in time centered in space um, phi at time level n plus one is equal to phi at time level n minus and now we've got the current number divided by two because the gradient is over a distance 2 delta x. We're now going to look at the order of accuracy of centred in time, centred in space. And again, we'll use Taylor series approximations, this time for phi j minus 1 and phi j plus 1 by about phi j. Um, we're going to do this to find a second order approximation for the gradient phi j dashed. We'll, we'll prove it, we'll use Taylor series to prove it that it is second order accurate. So you can write down these um, Taylor series expansions and in your notes and then check your answers. So pause the video. We've got phi j minus one equals phi j minus delta x phi j dashed plus delta x squared over two factorial phi j double dashed plus terms of order delta x cubed. And phi j plus one is equal to phi j plus delta x phi j dashed plus delta x squared over two factorial phi j double dashed plus terms of order delta x cubed. So in order to find, um, we, this is what we want to find, we want to find phi j dashed and this is the largest unknown so we want to eliminate this and rearrange to find phi j dashed. So in order to eliminate this term we can subtract these two equations which will give us that, uh, and then rearrange, uh, pause the video and attempt this yourself. Uh, when we rearrange, we should get phi j dashed is equal to the difference to phi j plus one minus phi j minus one over two delta x. And now the error is delta x squared. So we've showed, this shows that it is a second order accurate scheme. Um, and this is, this is what we wrote down on the previous slide for d phi by dx. Um, so we've proved that this is second order, and it's, it's, it's centered in time as well as set, centered in space, so it's centered or, second order in time and space. Um, so question to consider in the assignment, does CTCS do better than forward in time, backward in space? Why, why, why not? Uh, we're all, now I'm gonna define the difference between implicit and explicit schemes. Uh, explicit schemes, in explicit schemes, values at the next time step are determined from values at the current and previous time steps. This is So the two schemes that we've defined so far, or the three schemes, are all explicit schemes, and these are quite straightforward to, to calculate. Implicit schemes um, define values at the next time step uh, using values from the next time step. So this is not so straightforward. And if you want to calculate phi n plus 1, you need to know phi n plus 1. Um, so this is going to lead to a set of simultaneous equations. Um, so I hope that you know how to solve a set of linear simultaneous equations. You create a matrix equation, and you can solve a matrix equation. Uh, well, for example, you've probably come across Gaussian elimination. Um, later in the course, uh, you'll be looking at uh, better ways of solving large matrices, large systems of simultaneous equations. How about a set of nonlinear simultaneous equations? This is much more difficult. Um, 
you'll need something like um, a multi-dimensional multi generalization of the neutron raphson method. It's, it's difficult and expensive. Um, it's much easier to solve a linear equation implicitly rather than a nonlinear equation. And we are solving the linear attraction equation with a linear finite difference scheme. So this will lead to a set of linear simultaneous equations. So this is relatively straightforward to solve. But why would we want to use an implicit method at all? Uh, this is a question that we'll come back to and that you can consider during the assignment. So now we're going to define a implicit, an implicit finite difference scheme, backward in time, centered in space. So an equation for backward in time, centered in space. Uh, now, um, rather than going forward in time to define the gradient, we're going backwards in time. So you get... Um, phi at time level n plus 1 being dependent on the gradient of phi at time level n plus 1. Um, this is, of course, an implicit scheme, as I've just said. Um, so the question is, how do you formulate and how do you solve that using a matrix, which is an exercise I would like you to attempt. Um, so in order to write this as a matrix, uh, you can write all the values phi j at time level n as a vector and the same for time level n plus 1, then you need to find a matrix M such that the backward in time sentence space scheme is defined as this matrix multiplied by phi n plus 1 equals phi n. And then you can invert this, you can solve this matrix equation in order to solve phi n for phi n plus 1. Um, when you, I want you to have a go at working out what this matrix is. You'd, you'll need to assume some boundary conditions um, and you can assume that they're periodic boundary conditions, so that phi at position 0 is always equal to phi at position n. So there's the solution, which I won't dwell on, because I want you to attempt that and check your, ans check your answers with those in the lecture version of the notes. Um, more questions to think about. Will these advection schemes approximate the continuous partial differences of equations, given sufficient resolution? Um, Will we be able to take large time steps? Um, in order to answer these questions, we're going to need von Neumann stability analysis. Um, and von Neumann stability analysis relies on Fourier analysis. So the next video is going to be some revision on Fourier analysis before we move on to stability analysis. Um, there are actually there are three reasons for looking at for reviewing Fourier analysis. It's needed for stability analysis. Some weather forecasting models actually use spectral decompositions, which are spherical versions of Fourier decompositions. And finally, a Fourier analysis is extensively used to analyse climate data. Um, this, the uh, material on Fourier analysis isn't directly examinable because it's um, revision material, but it will be very heavily used. Um, and so that concludes this video introducing some finite difference schemes to solve the linear advection equation. <laughs>